من الأنعام ثمانية أزواج يخلقكم and he has created you في بطون أمهاتكم in the, in the wombs of your mothers خلقا من بعد خلق a creation after creation after creation from that first ovum that is fertilized to the zygote to the what what is called the uh, the the alaqa from that to the mudga from that you know from the little thing the little clot type of thing to a, that like chewed gum type of thing to something that looks like a human being at a few months stage after stage after stage till you're ready to be delivered allah, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying yakhlukukum he creates you in the wombs of your mothers fi butuni ummahatikum khalqan min ba'di khalqin fi dhulumat thalath in three layers of darkness and this is unique to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything else anybody is creating they need light allah creates in darkness keeps it secret three layers of darkness the scholar said one is the abdominal wall, the outer wall. Then the, the wall of the uterus, of the womb. And then the, what contains the amniotic fluid? The, the placental membranes, which contains the fluid. So one layer, two layer, three layers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept us protected, comfortable, in darkness. Light doesn't bother you. When you have little babies newly born, you bring a light, they'll do this. Have you seen them do that? Make faces like the newborn. You bring a light, bothers them. Allah keeps them nice, quiet, dark. They're hearing the heartbeat of the mother. They're hearing other things. And if, they, if inshallah, she's reciting Quran, they're hearing that. And they're enjoying in that three layers of darkness. Nobody knows. Initially, nobody, mother even doesn't know it's, it's there. Till she misses her cycles and, you know, she starts to throw up. She has no idea what's growing inside. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of how he created us and just mentions butune ummahatikum to remind us of the value of our mothers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the mothers of the world. Thalikum Allahu Rabbukum. This is Allah, your Lord. Reminding us of all of these favors. And then saying, that is Allah, your Lord. Lahul mulk, to him belongs the kingdom. Everything belongs to him. La ilaha illahu. There is no deity but him. Fa'anna tusrafun. Then where are you going? Where are you oh, astray? Where are you running away? That is Allah. And you want to run away from him? Look at all his favors. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, La ilaha, there is no God. Illahu. This is very special. It starts with nafi. Denying every, there is no God. If you just said, Allah is God, someone could say, yes, Allah is God, but there are other gods. That's what the Quraysh said. La ilaha, there is no God. Illallah, illahu. So then comes the affirmation. An example that somebody gave, which I found interesting, but Allah is above all example, saying it's like you telling your wife, I love you. Or telling your wife, I only love you. you see? By only, you've eliminated everybody else. One of our sisters didn't understand that. One is to exclude, say, I love no one except you. So we're saying, there is no God except Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so here the translation is, He it is who created you from a single being, and He it is who made from it its mate. He it is who created for you eight kinds of cattle in four pairs, and we talked about those four pairs. He creates you in your mother's wombs, giving you one form after another in three layers of darkness. That is Allah, your Lord. His is the kingdom and all authority. There is no God but He. Then how are you being turned away? How are you going astray? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after reminding us all of this, of this great truth, in takfuru, after all of this, if you disbelieve in takfuru, 
for in Allah ghaniyun ankum Allah is not in need of you and we had the same in surah Luqman Allah is ghani as the hadith says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith of Qudsi that if all of mankind were to develop a heart that is as bad as the worst of all human beings, it would not affect Allah in any way. And if all of humankind were to develop a heart as pure as the purest of you, like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it would not increase Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his kingdom in any way. Because he is al-ghani, he is not in need of anything. So Allah is saying, in takfuru, okay, after all of this reminder, if you disbelieve, then know that indeed Allah is ghaniun ankum. He is independent of you. وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعَبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ But he is not pleased with kufr from you. He doesn't expect that after all the favors. Kufr is two things. Kufr is to deny Allah. Kufr also is to deny his blessings. Okay, That's also. Shukr and kufr are opposite. And iman and kufr. So kufr means both things. That you are covering the truth and you are covering the favors of Allah and denying them. وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا Opposite of kufr. And if you show gratitude to Allah, يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ Then he is pleased with you. Okay, so Allah is telling us what he is pleased with, what he is displeased with. And now comes that ayah. وَلَا تَذِرُوا وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى That no soul will carry the burden of sins of another soul. Each one of you is only held accountable for yourself. And again the reminder... We frequently look at others, what they are doing. We should be looking at ourselves, what is my status? Okay. Especially in matters of disobedience, in my non-compliance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders. We shouldn't look at, if you do something good, don't look at yourself. You know, because then it might give you arrogance or might think, oh, I'm, done. I'm doing great. Look at yourself in your matters of disobedience and your weaknesses, not in your strength. So oh, I get up every night, four hours to hajj. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given tawfi. Keep it secret, do it, but don't rest on that because is there a class? Do you have guarantee? We don't know. So, therefore, focus on the mistakes and know that I am the only one who is accountable for this, not anyone else. And therefore, I don't worry about anyone else. We make dua for others, we advise others when we need to, uh, we help them in their moment of weakness if they have something. But we don't look down on people. That's why the Prophet ﷺ advised us that in matters of dunya, look at people who have less than you. And that will make you grateful to Allah. That, oh, I have more. Don't look in matters of dunya at people who have more than you. Because that will then make you sort of displeased and sort of discontent with what Allah has given you. In matters of deen, he said, look at people above you. So that is, oh, mashallah, he's gone so I need to chase with him. Don't look at people who are doing less than you. So he's doing this much, I'm, alhamdulillah, I'm better, I'm doing more. So our competition, and Allah SWT has put in our genes the spirit of competition, that we must compete in acts of worship and acts of goodness for the akhirah, not compete in the dunya because in the dunya you're going to get what's already written for you. Okay. That's very important to understand because frequently the moment we see somebody with something, I want to have that and compete with them. So when somebody in matters of dunya, we should give preference to others. Oh, you have it. But in matters of deen, don't give preference to anyone. That's why when there is a slot in the first row in the First saf in the salah, don't say, oh, uh, you, you, you take this. No, I want it because I get the reward for it. Okay. So don't, in matters which will impact the akhirah, don't give preference to others. Give preference to yourself. Okay? We sent out a reminder about the great tragedy in Pakistan of these floods. The whole idea was competition. You want to compete? Compete in this. Don't compete in how much did I make in 
at work how much did i make on the stock compete how much did i give in the path of fund that's where the competition should be so wala tazru waziratun wizra ukhra no one no soul will carry the burden of sins of another thumma then ila rabbikum marji'ukum then you will all return to allah fa yunabbiukum and then allah says he will teach we will tell you he will inform you naba he will inform you bima kuntum ta'malun as to what you used to do innahu alimun bi dhati sudur now again ikhlas comes in allah saying because indeed allah he's going to tell you what you did but then he says allah knows what is hidden in the chest sudur in the breasts of men in the chest of men means the heart that allah knows inside just like he knows he gave an example in the previous ayah he knows what is in the three layers of darkness our hearts in there inside too in the darkness nobody knows allah is saying he knows what's in your heart what was your intention when you did something that ikhlas comes in but allah is again reminding us in the surah that there is ikhlas you may have done something on the surface but he is saying he will he will tell you fa yunabbiukum fa yunab and then you will return to him and then he will tell you what you used to do he knows what is inside your hearts so that's very very important again ikhlas in what we do the translation if you disbelieve then know that allah is truly not in need of you nor is he pleased with disbelief from his servants but if you become grateful by being believers he will be pleased with you with that from you no soul burdened with sin will bear the burden of another then to your lord is your return and he will inform you of what you used to do he certainly knows best what is hidden in the hearts and chests of people then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a scenario similar scenario to what we had in Surah Luqman and after I finish this I want to hear from you which was the ayah that is similar here Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa idha massa al-insana durrun da'a rabbahu muniban ilayhi wa idha massa al-insan and when man is touched mas massa al-insan durrun by harm something bad happens something harmful happens da'a rabbahu he calls he making sincere du'a rabb he is calling his lord munib and turn back to he is completely focused on allah full full face to allah inaba means to turn back to allah now something has happened some sickness has come somebody is diagnosed with cancer something has happened all the wealth is gone whatever it is <coughs> ya allah save me ya allah do this make this go <coughs> ثم then اذا خوله نعمه منه and when allah surrounds him with his blessings and allah removes that what had happened nasiya ma kana yad'u ilayhi then he forgets who he was turning to when allah changes those conditions from harm to benefit from discomfort to comfort from uh, lack of peace to peace now he's forgotten he only turned when this, when it was difficult what was the ayah if you remember from surah luqman that was similar <laughs> yes when the person the example was when they are on the ship and the waves are coming over him now he turns to allah same thing and then when allah brings him to safety same thing he forgets he goes back to his ship so <coughs> similar remind ilayhi min qablu wa ja'ala lillahi andada and then not only that he forgets but he takes partners with allah li yudilla an sabilihi to guide people away from the truth not only is he gone astray but he sets an example for others to go astray because in a worldly matter some person might be very successful so people look up to him but he is misguided and he is like this so people say oh he is doing it so let's also do it so not only is he astray 
but he leads others astray because of his influence. Qul. Qul means what? Who is this command given to? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, all of the Quran is Qul because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has to say it, right? Whatever Allah says, he's supposed to. But wherever Qul comes means Allah is stressing that. Already he is supposed to give everything, tell you the, what is the words are. Qul, say it. So it's to emphasize what's coming after that. Okay. Tamatta' bi kufrika qalila. Enjoy your kufr, your denial for a short period of time. Short can be literally short or your whole life you can enjoy because that life is still qalil compared to what's coming. It's very short. Innaka min ashab nar. Indeed, you are from the people of fire. Enjoy. You deny this person like this who Allah challenges with difficulty to bring him towards him. And then he turns to Allah and then when Allah removes that and he turns away and he takes partners and then he persists in that and misleads others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here that you persist in that, then wait, you are from the people of the fire. <clears throat> and the translation, and when some hurt touches man, he cries to his Lord, Allah alone, turning to him in repentance. But when he bestows a favor upon him from himself, he forgets that for which he cried for before. And he sets up rivals to Allah in order to mislead others from his path. <clears throat> Say, take pleasure in your disbelief for a short period of time. Surely you are one of the dwellers of the fire. And we'll do, inshallah, one ayah more, if time permits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now asks a question. And these are the kind of questions where Allah is a style to catch our attention. And there is no answer given to the question. Why? Why is there no answer given to these kind of questions? Well, we'll see, let's see the question first. أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ سَاجِدًا وَقَائِمًا يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ أَمَّنْ هُوَ Allah SWT is saying is one who a qanitun who is devoted and obedient آنَاءِ اللَّيْلِ who stands at night ساجداً وَقَائِمًا who spends his whole life Either standing in, or in sajda. He's talking about salatul tahajjud. Yahdharun akhirah. Feeling the presence and fearing the reality of the hereafter. Akhirah. Yarju wa yarju rahmatahu. And hopeful, fearing the akhirah, what's coming, but hopeful of Allah's rahm, of Rabbihi, of rahmah, of his Rabb. So again, same thing, fear and hope. And this person, a person is standing all night or half the night or one third of the night or part of the night or to fear because he can't sleep because the Akhra is coming. He gets up, as it says his sides leave the beds and he's standing and he's in sajda and he's making dua because he is fearful and he's making dua because of rahmah of his Rabb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the person before, the one who turned away from Allah, one, one example and this example. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِيَ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Tell them, is the person who knows and the person who does not know, are they equal? That's the question. And does it need an answer? No, because the answer is so obvious. Look at that person and look at this person. How can they be equal? He knows. And the other one, here the example is, he knows the Akhira, he knows his Rabb. The other one doesn't know the Akhira and doesn't know his Rabb. Whatever distorted opinion he has. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, can they be equal? The answer is no. إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ Only the people of lub means of understanding, understand this. <coughs> and the translation, 
is one who is obedient to Allah, prostrating himself or standing in prayer during the hours of the night, fearing the hereafter and hoping for the mercy of his Lord, like the one who disbelieves? Say, are those who know equal to those who know not? It is only men of understanding who will remember or take lessons from these verses. <clears throat> and one last ayah we will cover today. Qul, again, important coming. Qul, say to them, Ya ibadil ladina amanu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have addressed, we are all his ibadi himself. He could have said, Ya ibadi al ladina amanu. O oh, my servants who believe. Putting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Qul, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Muzammil, Ya Muddathir. You, honoring Rasulullah, giving him that special thing. You tell them. Allah could have said himself, he says, Qul, Ya Ibadil Ladina, O oh, my servants. <coughs> tell them, O oh, my servants who believe, Ittaqu Rabbakum, have taqwa of your Lord. Again, have that fear. Taqwa is not just hauf, it is fear in the sense to protect yourself. One is to fear and to be paralyzed. One is to have fear to protect yourself from whatever the danger is. And here the danger is the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the jahannam, the fire. Protect yourself. Taqwa rabbakum, have fear of Allah, of taqwa of Allah. Lilladheena, then he said, Lilladheena ahsanu, for those who do Ihsan, who do the best. Fi hadhi dunya, in this dunya, whoever, lil ladina ahsanu fi hadhi dunya, those who do ahsan, everything to, to, to perfection, to the best ability, as if Allah is watching them. Hasana. For them is good. As you sow, so shall you reap. You do good, you will get better from Allah. You do bad, you will get equal. You will not get worse. Because Allah is just. But in giving for good, He gives you more. So that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah. Now comes that ayah. Wal ardullahi And the earth of Allah is spacious, is vast. This is what gave the permission for migration. In other words, if you cannot worship Allah, if you're not permitted to worship Allah where you are because of whatever type of rule you are living in, they say, no, you're not allowed to pray, you're not allowed to worship, you're not allowed to do this. Allah says, Ardullahi wa The earth of Allah is wa'asiyah. Move, migrate to a land where you can worship Allah, where you can follow your deen. So there is never an excuse for a person because this was for the people of Mecca. They couldn't practice. Allah says, move. Today, what is our most common reason for migration? Money. Money, better jobs. For a spouse, my wife-to-be lives in California, so I will move to California, right? Right? People move from across the continent. So, and it happened at the time of Rasulullah If you remember in the first hadith of Bukhari, it is there. That one person migrated to marry a woman. So, that he was known by that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that his earth is vast. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ and it's only for those who are sabir. And sabir is not, means sabir means when you're under difficulties. Very tight situation, great deal of harm coming your way. You are patient and you are persevering. You don't let your deen go no matter what happens. Those are the sabirun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innama. It is only for those. You are for sabirun. Ajrahum bi ghairi sab. Their reward is bi ghairi hisab. If you do a good deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, generally his rule is, he gives you a reward 10 times to 700 times. But if your good deed is qualified as associated with sabr, 
then there is no accounting of 10 times 7. It's Bighayri Isa. Unlimited reward. Now we don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test us with great difficulties so that we have sabr. But whenever he tests us, let us be patient and perseverant, no complaining, doing things till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes it. Nothing lasts. Ease and comfort doesn't last and difficulty and, and harm doesn't last because nothing in the dunya lasts. It cycles. So hang in there till it passes and you will qualify as a sabr. And we had a beautiful example last week about this. One beautiful brother from Somalia lost his 23-year-old girl, just dropped dead last, just like that, last week. And you should see the sabr on this man. Lesson for all of us. So I was just jealous of that sabr. I said, you know, he's giving us a lesson in sabr. And now what would be his reward? Bighayr hisab. No complaint, nothing. Allah's destiny. Allah's amana. Finished. And we can only talk about it because we don't know what it feels like to lose a 23-year-old child, a young child. You know? We lose our parents, we expect that. But to lose a child, you know, it's... So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, to my slaves, O my slaves who believe in the oneness of Allah, be afraid of your Lord and keep your duty to him. For those who do good, ahsan, in this world there will be a good reward. And Allah's earth is spacious. So if you cannot worship Allah at a place, go to another. Only those who are enduringly patient and perseverant shall receive their reward in full without reckoning or accounting. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, reward us uh, with without accounting and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also not take us to account for our misdeeds and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treat us not with his justice but with his mercy with his rahmah yeah, for all of us and for the entire ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make these words of his uh, sort of embedded in our hearts and manifested by our actions and uh, pure, words that purify our hearts to a state of ikhlas only for his pleasure. So we are going to, inshallah, end uh, this session. It's been just over an hour. And inshallah, bi idhnillah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us life and tawfiq, we will meet in a month since I'm going to be away for the early part, most of the middle of September, inshallah. So we will open this up for questions and comments. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa nastafiru wa tubu.